Dear brothers and sisters, happy once again this morning to contact you all through this electronic media. And I'm sure God's blessing will be upon all of us as we sit together and meditate upon the words of God. Shall we have a word of prayer? Thank the Lord once again this morning for the opportunity that thou hast granted to all of us to deal with the word of God. Every time we deal with the word of God, we are sure to get some good benefit for our spiritual experience. Thank thee for that experience. Thank the Lord once again for the word of God placed in our hands. May our inner eyes be opened and see the wonders hidden in thy scriptures. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, you may kindly recall that a couple of weeks back, we dealt with the Elijah in the first king of uh, uh, chapter 17, verses 1 to 7. We found Elijah going through some tests in the wilderness. And we also noted that Elijah was a man of courage a prophet of courage and confrontation. And uh, whenever we think of uh, uh, Elijah, we would also remember the great success that he had on the top of the Mount Carmel. The spectacular victory that he got, the prayer he did amidst all other people in that country, in the presence of the king, he prayed to his God, living God, and he brought fire from heaven, which consumed the sacrificial animal kept on the altar. A great success. Everybody were surprised, and uh, they felt Elijah was a great man. But you should also notice, before he could get that success, God led him through various tests. And one of those tests was to stay by the river brook. The brook at Cherit. The brook at Cherit. And uh, he had some experience there, spiritual experience. We do not know how long he stayed by that brook at Charit, but God did lead him miraculously by sending crows to feed him morning and evening. He had a wonderful time uh, with the God and uh, his faith was tested greatly. And finally, we found that brook got dried up. And after the brook got dried up, now, the second half begins from eight words in the same chapter, 17th of First King. Chapter 17th of uh, First King, we would be dealing. The second half begins from verse eight. And we, here also, we find Elijah being tested for his faith. Here, after the brook gets dried up, God calls him and tells him, you go there over a place called Zaribath. And to his surprise, God tells him that he has already arranged with the widow woman to take care of him. Very, very interesting to note. One incident got over, the river got dried up where he stayed for uh, many uh, days. We do not know how many months, how many days he stayed there, but he stayed there until the word come, uh, came from God the second time. And uh, now God tells him after the brook got dried up, God tells him to go to a place called Zaribat. And it is quite interesting to note that Zaribath is a place right in the territory which comes under the wicked king Ahab. 
and uh, that Zaribat is the hometown of the wicked lady Jezebel. And uh, he was terribly frightened of that lady, Elijah was. And now God directs him, you go to that place, Zaribat. There, I have arranged with the, a widow woman to take care. Very big spiritual lessons are there for our uh, spiritual benefit. Each verse, when we read it together prayerfully, you will get so many points. We, you don't have to have any explanation from anybody. You go through these verses prayerfully. Definitely you will come out with plenty of uh, lessons for our spiritual growth. Shall we begin with the uh, eight words? And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zaribat, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So very interesting to note that God has chosen a widow woman, a widow from Zaribat. It was a Gentile town belonging to Jezebel, hometown of Jezebel. And God has chosen a Gentile lady. She is not from Israel, a Gentile lady, but to a widow. God is not directing Elijah, go and meet an influential person in that place. He is telling him to the place Zaribot, which is in the territory of the wicked king Ahab. It's like meeting the lion in its own den. Horrible situation. Much beyond our thinking and our logic. God tells him, you go there. There I have already commanded, arranged with the woman, widow woman. And her condition is so very pathetic. We will read in the next uh, uh, verse. As I told you, we will keep reading one by one, wherever it is necessary. And uh, we will get the explanation. It is self-explanatory in nature. Each verse has a wonderful lesson for all of us. Tenth word, so he arose and went to Zaribat. And when he came to the gate of the city, they called the widow woman. In ninth words, God says, he has commanded a widow woman, a widow woman. The widow woman, that definite article says, the woman with whom God had made arrangement was there as he entered through the city gate. What was he doing? Woman was there gathering of sticks and he called her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Horrible situation. There was no rain for a long time. The river which was uh, at at the place Cherith gave him water, stopped, and then he was directed to go to Zaribat, which was 20 days away by walk, 20 days away from the place where he stayed. He had traveled 20 days. When he came to the gate of the city Zaribat, he saw that woman, widow woman, picking up some sticks asking for water and she is going for going to get water look at the condition of the woman whom god has referred to elijah for his stay and for his provision unexpected quarters god leads his children and he provides provision for his children from totally unexpected quarters we would never even imagine that our help will come from those quarters. But God does that. God has chosen a widow, a Gentile widow. This is the widow God gave himself when he was 
on his earthly ministry here he refers to uh, this lady in the book of luke we read about her he refers to this lady and how she was identified by god among living all other ladies in the country israel living all other widow this particular lady was chosen because of the little faith strong faith that she exhibited take heart this morning even the little faith the little goodness in me would be properly recognized by god even if the whole world doesn't recognize me wherever i am even in the nook of the corner of this world if i am staying he would be recognizing his children wherever they are he recognized this lady and he used his, her service to provide food and shelter for the great prophet later we know he concluded his uh, uh, journey life journey not in the tomb but he was taken alive in the chariot of fire a great prophet was being taken care by an ordinary lady a horrible situation she was she was in a helpless situation she was a widow in that society widows were not properly treated they were helpless there would be no men folks in that family and so she would have to take care of herself and in this case she has a son to take care to and uh, the entire nation was in danger and uh, they had water scarcity they had a famine food scarcity and that was the time god had already talked arranged with that lady to take care of the great prophet elijah and so exercising faith in this great difficulty she was in utter poverty in the extreme poverty she agreed to cooperate with god in taking care of a man of god you imagine yourself in that position we will have so many excuses for not going by what god says in this extreme poverty and uh, the helpless condition the predicament was so helpless that li- this lady was facing in that condition she comes forward to agree to have this man of god with her and to take care of him how does the thing happen to us if it happens to us will we be ready to accept god's call will we be hesitating to do what he tells this lady though she had a very little knowledge about the god of israel she might have heard about the way he led his children in the wilderness because she was not part of that of uh, israel and the nation she was a gentile lady and she had little knowledge about the god of israel and the god of elijah and she had no knowledge whatsoever about this prophet she was willing to take care and what was she doing as she was about to go and get water he is making an another request i don't understand looking at the condition of this woman how can he ask for a help see what she is telling she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me i pray thee a morsel of bread in thine hand and what is the answer given by this lady and she said 12th verse and she said as the lord thy god liveth i have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruse and behold i am gathering two sticks that i may go in 
and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die this is the utter helpless condition of the lady whom the lord has referred to elijah how will you and die if we had been in the place of elijah would have reacted to this arrangement made by god definitely we would have expected god to direct us to uh, to go to an influential person in that town and get help but here is the god who tells me you go there i have already arranged with a woman widow to help you when i go there i find herself in utter poverty and she is picking up uh, sticks to deal with her last meal her barrel of meal was almost empty the cru- the oil cruse was almost empty and he she had little bit morsel of meal little meal in that barrel little oil in that cruse and she decided that she should cook finish eating and end their lives she and her son that was the condition and elijah is directing her not only asking for a cup of water he is telling her to bring a morsel of bread is it that uh, this prophet was selfish to ask that you see here two persons two characters one the widow woman and the great prophet this prophet at least had prior experience with god and how he fed him how the food was door delivered to him by cross by ravens he had some experience so he would have got little courage to face this situation but he was also tested for his faith and this woman also was tested no meal in the barrel no oil in the cruse very little they she was at the bottom of the barrel she was at the bottom of the cruse of oil her supplies had gone to the very rock bottom and uh, she was helpless her predicament was so hopeless and that was the condition she agreed to come forward to accommodate the man of god with her and to keep him until the days would become clear by god what a great faith she is exercising in spite of all the unfavorable situation we would have waited for a favorable situation to go and exercise our faith but this lady was not like that she was very bold she expressed her fears and doubts and this man of god immediately what does he say what answer he gives very interesting very interesting as i told you we will be reading a lot this day from up to 16th we will be reading 13th verse of 17th chapter shall we read and elijah said unto her fear not this two words are very very uh, important for our faith he says fear not he also was not knowing what will happen to both of them and uh, he came to know that the meal that she had was very little hardly enough for her soul and her son but in spite of that he says fear not go and do as thou hast said you said you are going to dress it you do according to what you said but make me there of a little cake first make me there of a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son so the command from elijah was this make me first a piece of cake 
the command for for uh, for this lady though she had little meal in the barrel little oil in the cruse and uh, she was commanded to go and prepare as he as she told but make him the cake first make for the man of god we have a lesson wonderful lesson in this incident god says looking at each one of us in spite of all what you are undergoing in these difficult days in this world make me a cake first do i make a piece of cake for god first what is the implication spiritual implication for us all we must give make god as our top more topmost priority we must give him topmost priority in all our programs god must be number 1 make him first in all our activities make him first in all our programs then we will be greatly promised however little what we have is no matter he recognizes and he comes for the little what we have and when you come forward when i come forward to offer that little we all will be greatly blessed god is a god who is keeper of his promises he would be always honoring the children his children by keeping his promise his promises would never fail and you see here what's the promise that the man of god makes you make me a cake first and then afterwards you make for thus saith the lord god of israel the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruse of oil fail until the day that the lord sendeth rain upon the earth barrel of meal shall not fail the cruse of oil shall not fail the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruse of oil fail that's the promise when you use the little for him when you make him the cake first definitely you will be blessed i will be blessed let him make god first in all our programs and when times of difficulty go to him first to go on in your regular duty go to him to go down sometimes in our lives go to him first to go up to go down everything with him you do you will be honored and he is a god who will honor his promises the cruise of oil will never fail barrel of meal shall never want never waste that is the promise god gives us what she does and uh, uh, the next word 15th words we we find here she went and did according to the saying of elijah and she and he and her house they did many days we do not know how many days but they did it many days she did according to the word of god and that is very important when we do according to the word of god definitely things will be all right the last words that we would be dealing uh, with this morning is 16th words wonderful fulfillment of god's uh, uh, promise they did it many days because the barrel of meal 16th words and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruse of oil fail according to the word of the lord according to the word of the lord the promises would never fail because he is the keeper of promises which is speak by elijah the barrel of meal meal wasted not neither did the cruse of oil fail that was the wonder he is willing to do for all of us whatever be our case this lady was there picking up two sticks the word of god says 
she was there to pick up two sticks we do not know how long that two sticks would be burning for a, a meal to be cooked she was there to pick up two sticks and a, a little almost empty barrel of uh, meal and almost empty cruse oil was almost over and she prepared a cake first for the man of god and she and he and all his household people ate for many days the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the curse of cruse of oil fail according to the word of the lord may lord bless us all abundantly and go through this kind of mountain moving faith this lady exercise the big faith though she was a poor lady she exercised big faith her her faith was so great and that's why christ himself is referring her contribution in the new testament when he was here on his earthly um, mission and uh, elijah the prophet was greatly benefited because of this experience he learned to expect god's help from totally unexpected quarters that's how he deals god deals with all of us he deals with all of us and he gives us resources from the most unexpected quarters beyond our logic things would be happening when we use little two sticks and the little meal that we have and the little oil we have would be greatly blessed shall we pray loving gracious father we thank the lord once again for the wonderful lessons that we have learned through the experience of elijah help us that experience be ours especially in these difficult days when we are undergoing a similar situation may our barrel of meal be blessed may our cruse of oil be blessed may our supplies be blessed by the heavenly father may we be a blessing to others too finally when thou come in thy kingdom may it be our privilege to stay with thee forever and ever this we pray in jesus name amen may the love of god our father the grace of jesus christ our redeemer and the sweet communion and fellowship of the holy spirit our comforter be with us today and forever amen